question? Morning. What do we got? Two shots, small caliber to the head. Workers renovating this warehouse found him when they showed up this morning. Man's name's Robert Symes, 33 years old, organ donor. Good looking girlfriend. Got about 80 bucks in here. Oh, a couple of flaps of dope. Well, wasn't robbery. Maybe he was a dealer. No blood splatter from the gunshots. But I got a tire tread through some of his blood, so maybe he shot in the car here and dumped out. I'll canvas the neighborhood. We'll start with this warehouse here. Hang on. The guy's got a cell phone on him. <laughs> Who'd he call that? 11 missed calls, a few of them stored numbers. Two calls from Lou, six calls from Ed. Lou and Ed, another industrial accident in the dope trade. St. Luke's called, they've got a three-year-old boy who came in DOA. What? They've requested to do the autopsy with their pathologist over there. Three-year-old boy? What, is there, what are the circumstances? Doctor thinks he died of a fall. This is a preliminary report. Well, this says that there was a closed head injury. That's consistent with a fall, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, what you do is you call that doctor down there and you tell him I'm good with him continuing chain of care over there. And if the autopsy is clean, they go ahead, they release the body to the parents. And I'll get on the phone, I'll get the coroner's liaison to send a uniform over there and talk to the parents. We need a sudden death report, don't we? Yes. Where is it? You're doing that. I was downstairs in the office when I heard Julie screaming. It's, it's my daughter. Oh, and you think he fell from the swings there? Yeah. He was only out of my sight for a few minutes. And you say your daughter found him? Yes, she's eight. I'd like to talk to her if that's all right. Oh, she's sleeping right now. I'm sorry, but I'll need to talk to her. All right, I'll, I'll wake her. Uh, so what happened when you came outside? Well, I, I ran out and, and Terry wasn't breathing. You tried to revive him? Uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I, I gave him mouth to mouth and, and then Claire, my wife, came out and all we could think of doing was getting him to the hospital. And, oh, Jesus. I still can't believe it. I. It's like somebody kicked me in the stomach. So, Ed, do you know why you're here? No. Well, I got bad news. Or maybe it's good news, you tell me. Your friend, Bobby Symes, he took a couple of bullets in the head last night. Is he gonna pull through? The sign on the door says homicide, Ed. Bobby is dead. Now, when's the last time you had any contact with him? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. What's today? Wednesday. Friday. Right. Friday. Uh, let's see. Sunday. Yeah, we were uh, watching some football at a sports bar on the beach there in Kitsilino. Okay, good. Last night. That would be Thursday. Can you account for your movements from midnight on? Yeah, I was at home in bed. Alone? Yeah, alone. Sleeping? Yeah, sleeping. I... Do you talk in your sleep, Ed? <laughs> I don't think so. Because we got about six phone calls from your cell phone to Bobby's cell phone at 1 a.m., 1.10, 1.16. Oh, yeah, he was supposed to come over. And bring you some dope? I don't do coke. Did I say cocaine? Okay, Edward. I don't think you're telling me everything, so I want you to spend the night here with us, okay? What for? I, I didn't do anything. Maybe a good night's sleep will help improve your memory. I need to talk to you about a case. Sure, far away. I had dinner with Rupert Jones last night, and uh, he was telling me about an autopsy he did at the hospital. Rupert Jones that just had his first baby, Rupert Jones? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. The reason he brought it up is that it was the first body of a baby that he'd autopsied since he and Anna had had their girl. They got to him. Bad. Anyway, uh, cause of death was a closed head injury, but there wasn't any skull fracture, which is very unusual, so I asked to see Rupert's report. I think you know the case. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I know this case just came in the other day. 
You know what? The uh, uniform went down there, spoke to the parents, and they found she was confident. Nothing suspicious about this death. Yeah, well, I'm suspicious. The autopsy report lists the cause of death as a subdural hematoma. That's consistent with a fall from a swing, isn't it? Without a fracture, it's more consistent with shaking, maybe. Shaking? Yeah. That's what killed him? There's been some fresh research done on this, and apparently it is so unlikely for a child to die from a fall under four feet that it's almost always a lie to hide abuse. In this case, we won't know unless I do a second autopsy. We'll kill our bed. Body sent back from the hospital. Great. Um, I will clear my schedule for it when it arrives. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. When did it happen? Two nights ago. How'd you find me, anyway? Your number was stored in Bobby's cell phone. Right. Sorry. Your picture was in his wallet. Yeah, well, he was my boyfriend. Uh, yeah. When was the last time you saw Bobby? Tuesday, I think. We went to a movie. I got to sit. What about Thursday? I what were you doing Thursday night? I worked a late shift. I got off at 3. OK, if I go in there and ask the foreman, that's what I'm going to hear, that you were working, right? Right? Something wrong, Ruby? I'm just scared. All right, that's, I'm just scared. You know something about this? I know all about this. I was there when it happened. You saw it? Yeah. All right, you're going to have to come downtown with me and make a statement. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. On the infant, on uh, Terrence Ellison? Yeah, we're still waiting on the body. It's going to be a problem. The hospital released the body last night, and the parents had it cremated this morning. I okayed it. I'm, I'm really sorry about this. I told them if the autopsy was all done, everything that they needed was done, they could release the body to the parents, but... Okay, can we backtrack on this? Without the body, it's gonna be tough to prove shaking. Yeah. Well, Rupert said that they had a complete set of x-rays and uh, complete histology. Any help there? Yeah, maybe. Histology could tell us whether there's any retinal hemorrhage in the infant's eyes. And if there is, it's a result of rapid acceleration and deceleration, which does point to shaking. Well, if there is, Rupert should have flagged that. There's another kid in that home. Bobby out with his business? Oh, no. No way. I work for a living. You saw where I work. OK. You want to tell me how this thing with Bobby went down? Well, Bobby had to meet a guy because the guy owed him money. Did you say this guy's name? No. But I had to drive him on account of he lost his license. So we went into the app well, What and time was this? I don't know. 2 AM, maybe. Anyway, this car was waiting there. What kind of a car was it? You know what? I can't tell this story if you keep on interrupting me. It was just a car, all right? So Bobby got out of the car, and then he got into the other car, and bang, bang! Just like that. Man, I was scared shitless. I hit the gas, and I was out of there. So you saw the guy that killed your boyfriend, Bobby? Yeah, I saw him. I remember his license number, too. Oh, good. That's very good. Here, I want you to write that down for me. So, Ruby, you want to tell me now why you didn't come forward right away about your boyfriend getting shot? Look, you don't know these guys, the guys Bobby hung with. Bad, bad, bad. They kill people. They kill people? Yeah, people are always disappearing around them. At least that's what Bobby told me. Must be hell getting up a barbecue. You see, in a case like this one, where, where a child dies, we need to understand exactly how the tragedy happened. Then we can stop the same thing happening to other children. Yes, we understand. All right, All right why don't you show me upstairs? I, I was in my office, uh, checking the uh, Tokyo Exchange after closing. 
Terrence played in here while you worked? Yeah. Um, when Claire wasn't here or, uh, or, or Julie was at school. That way I keep an eye on him. All right. So your daughter Julie, she would babysit Terrence sometimes then? Yes, uh, she's the one who found him. And uh, what was Julie prior to finding Terrence? Uh, she was in the family room downstairs. She was watching TV. Could he have gone out the store here? No, he can't open the front door. So if Terrence were heading out to the backyard, he'd come, what, through here, through the family room? Yes. Yeah? This is where Julie was watching television? Yes. Mrs. Ellison, you told the uniform that you just got home from work. Where was Terrence when you got home? Uh, he came upstairs with me. And how long did he stay up here with you? Uh, a little while, and then I wanted to take a shower, so I sent him downstairs to his dad. Then he came down in the study to see you, right? For a few minutes, and then I... I called for Julie to come and get him, and, and uh, she brought him in here. Right. Well, why don't we go take a look in the backyard at the swings here? And you told the officer that you got home about 5.30. Was that your usual time? I'm a, a real estate agent. My hours vary depending upon when a client can see a property, when I can show a property. Sometimes I don't get home till midnight. That must have been hard. You're not being able to be here with your son when you want to be, and then when you do get home, you're too tired. I am never too tired for my kids. My little nephew sure is a pistol. Yeah? Yeah, he's always getting into everything. Terrence was like that. Always climbing up on everything. He was a beautiful little boy. Must be pretty rough on you. It's like I just want to die. Can't do that, Ben. You got a family. Yeah. Whose window's that up there? I said Julie's, our daughter's. My name's Angela, and this is my friend, Mick. Hello. Your name's Julie, is that right? Hey, that's a nice monkey. I'm sorry about your brother. Now, your mom explained that we're here to find out what happened. Can we ask you a few questions? OK. Good. Now, your mom says that you were in the family room watching TV when your brother came down, is that right? Yeah, he wanted to go outside on the swings. He always wants me to swing him up high. I used to like that. What else does he like you to do? He likes to bounce on the bed, too. It's kind of like a big old trampoline, huh? Does he like to bounce in here? On your bed? Hey. Julie, when you were watching TV, did you see Terrence go outside? No, I thought he went upstairs, maybe. Hmm. But after a couple of minutes, you turned off the TV and went outside. My show was over. Oh, and that's when you saw Terrence again. By the swings, he was shaking all over and he puked. It scared me. That's when you called for your mommy and daddy. Did the right thing. Is that the guy you saw in the alley? Who is he? He knew Bobby. Maybe he had a beef with him. Take a good look. Is that the guy you saw in the alley? No, I've never seen him before in my life. He phoned Bobby six times shortly before Bobby was killed. Well, I've never seen him before. Sonny and I went over the x-rays and the histology, and we do both feel that the cause of death was definitely a closed head injury, but there were retinal hemorrhages in both of the eyes. Rapid acceleration, deceleration caused the injury, as in shaking. All right, nothing else could have done this. Could have been the father roughhousing with his son, threw him up in the air and catching him. Did the father say he was playing rough? Well, no, but the bed was right by the window, and the, the window's over top of the swing set, so if he jumped in on the bed, no? Jumping on the bed wouldn't cause this, and neither would a fall. The child's injuries show very specific evidence of shaking. Does this happen pretty quick? Not necessarily, not with this kind of injury. I'd say it took probably 30 to 40 minutes at least for the bleeding in the skull to cause enough pressure on the brainstem to put him in a coma and kill him. 
You're definite. Yeah. 30 or 40 minutes. It could have been either one of them. Mother's upstairs, dad's down in his office, kids all over the house, right? I hate to be the one to say this, but it doesn't have to be the parents. What about the daughter Julie? Maybe she's jealous of her little brother. Oh, shit. Well, I had to bring it up. A shaken baby. To me, that's a parent out of control. Now, if we leave this daughter, Julie, in that household any longer, she's at serious risk of injury, maybe even worse. So do you want to get social services involved in this? If it was the parents, I don't want to take any chances. I say we get that girl out of that house. I got some move. Thanks for the coffee. Claire? 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 Hi, sweet. What are you doing up? Hmm? Have to go to the bathroom? Come on. Let me put you back to bed. You feeling all right? I want to say my prayers. You want to say your prayers? That's a good idea. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. That's great, sweetie. Good job. Come on. Mommy teach you that? Here's Harry. Give him a hug for me. Anything you want to tell me? Stay with me. Daddy, I'll stay with you, honey. Daddy loves you. not shoot that little shit Bobby, but I do congratulate the son of a bitch who did. He saved the gene pool from another cretin. For an educated man, David, you got a terrible rap sheet. Assault, armed robbery, how did you do that? How did you go from the arts to armed robbery? I got a little behind on my student loans. Oh yeah, those tuition payments are kind of high, aren't they? I understand you and Bobby go way back. Yeah, a few years. Yeah, people tell me that you owe him a lot of money, too. What's that, another student loan? I owe a lot of people money. I don't go around shooting them, if uh, that's what you're inferring. Well, yes, I guess that is what I am inferring, because I got a witness that puts you in that alley. They saw your car, and they wrote down your license number. When did you say this was? Three nights ago. Well, it wasn't me. I was in Victoria three nights ago. You drove yourself over there? Yeah, I drove. You got people over there who'll vouch for you? Yeah, I was staying at the Empress Hotel. The Empress Hotel? I've got receipts. You got receipts? I want to see them. See, my accountant makes me keep every one. It's a write-off. You got the dates on there, credit card numbers. What's that? That's for a bottle of wine. You pay $200 for a bottle of wine? No wonder you owe people money. Ruby, that license plate number you gave me. Uh -huh. You sure about that plate number? Yeah, what? Okay, come on. We pulled the guy in that owns the car that you saw in the alley. I want you to come in here and take a look at him. Okay, good. That asshole. Okay, take a look. That's him. That's the guy I saw. No mistake. Okay, come on. We're going for a ride. Hey, tell that guy in an interview he can go home. Look, that's the guy I saw. He said, where'd you take your training? The school for morons, you jerk? I think you're jumping the gun on this one. I went by the Ellison house, and from what I saw, it's a normal family. The child, Julie, outside of her grief for her brother, seems perfectly adjusted. That's dead brother. Your report should read dead brother. My concern is with the living child. There's two of us. The point is, I saw no sign of any physical or emotional abuse. Okay, I got two pathologists willing to testify in open court that this baby died of a severe shaking. That's abuse, isn't it? And as I understand it, the pathologist at the hospital didn't oh. come to the same conclusion. He believed that Terrence died from a fall. We didn't. We've now discovered the doctor was wrong, okay? There was different information available now than when they did the autopsy. You know that. If I pull this child from her home and you're wrong, you're making a painful situation worse. If you do nothing, we leave a child in a dangerous situation. You don't want that. Do you? Have the parents been charged with anything? No, not at this point. Then in my judgment, until you have more, I think it's in the best interest to leave Julie where she is. 
Call me if anything changes. If Julian's up in the morgue beside her dead brother, I should give you a call? Get me something that will justify me taking that child from her home. I know you. Until then, I'm sorry. Okay, Ruby, come on. Let's go. This is where Bobby was found that morning, okay? Over here, right here. Exactly, right here. Now, where were you? Where was your car? Over there. Over there? Yeah. Show me. It was, it was right here. The car was parked right here. Right here? Yes. Exactly right here? Yes. Okay, so you had a good view from here. You saw everything that went down. Yes, you can see right there where he threw Bobby out of the car. These are some crime pictures taken of the scene the morning that Bobby was found. You see these big blue dumpsters here? They were being used by a company that was doing some work in the warehouse. Now, if you were here, right here at exactly this spot, you were right behind those dumpsters, and there's no way in hell you could have seen anything. Am I right? Um... Maybe... You know what? I was parked over there. Okay, Ruby, quit your lying and tell me the truth now. Oh, shit! You know what? He's gonna kill me if Who's I tell. Who's gonna kill you? Ed! Ed? The guy you never saw before in your life? Yes! Okay, come on. Good afternoon, detectives. Counselor? Afternoon, counselor. I'll see you. Would either of you like to tell me why homicide's investigating an accidental death? Yeah, we just have a few questions about how Terrence died. Ask them then. All right. You're a stockbroker? A uh, day trader, to be exact. Day trader. That's high risk investing from what I know about it. Well, I, I make a good living. Which is what you were trying to do the day your son died. Yes. I was trading for you that day. Well. So many ups and downs, it's uh, hard to judge from one day's loss. So you did lose money that day? Don't answer that. I can understand, you know, you're on a bit of a losing streak. Get home, the kids are carrying on. Could leave you feeling uh, pretty aggravated. Move on, please. Mrs. Ellison, you told me that you were working on your feet all day, that you were tired. I never said that. Okay. How was Terrence when you got home after work? Was he cranky? He was happy to see me. You needed to take a shower to wash some of the day off, right? And Terrence wanted to play. I told you, I sent him downstairs to his dad. Because you were angry, you were a little on edge, you just didn't want to deal with him. Oh, God. She took a shower. I take a shower when I get home from work. You know, it just seems a little odd that a child of three would be left unsupervised, even for a few minutes. Do you have kids? Either of you? Didn't think so. Terrence didn't die from falling off a swing. Somebody shook him. Somebody shook him hard enough to kill him. Shook him? I, I, I don't understand. Shook him. What does that mean? This interview is over. No, I, I want to know what he means. Shook him, shook him. How? Are you saying somebody, you mean Mrs. somebody Ellison. did this to him? Mrs. Ellison, I advise you not to say anything more at this point. This interview is over. Bobby was my ex-boyfriend, and he wouldn't let go, you know? He was always following me, and he would beat me. And I thought he was going to kill me for sure, especially when I started going out with Ed, who Bobby thought was beneath him. So, anyway, Ed said he, he would talk to Bobby and let him know that he shouldn't hurt me. So I told Bobby that Ed and I broke up and that Ed wanted to pay him the money he owed him, but we were late, and Ed kept calling Bobby's phone, but Bobby wouldn't answer because she thought it was real funny to keep Ed waiting, which I didn't know, but that got Ed pissed. And Bobby got in the car with Ed and Ed shot him. No, I didn't know he was going to shoot him. He just said, talk. That's all. He just talked to him. And I can show you where he said he threw the gun away. No, well, that's all right. We'll get to that later. Which one of these guys did you start dating first? Bobby. But I liked Ed better, so I broke up with Bobby and started dating Ed. Well, how did you end up in the car with Bobby that night? 
I lied to Bobby. I told him that Ed and I broke up and that I wanted to get back with him, but that was just to fool him into coming here because Ed owed him money. Okay. You understand? No, not really. Why don't you just show me where Ed hid the gun? One of those parents definitely shook that kid, all right? The other may not know it. We charge him, pit him against each other, set him against each other. The one did it comes forward. We can't use a shotgun approach and charge them to see how they react because we don't have enough evidence. The autopsy report is definitive. This is a shaken baby. It clearly indicates that this is a type of injury that does not occur in any other circumstance. I know I've seen the report, but there's no bruising. There's no indication of ongoing abuse. I mean, maybe it wasn't intentional. So what are the chances we can uh, pin criminal negligence on them? Well, we still have to know which one did it, if it was the parents. Now, there's another child, an older sibling, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's time for a formal interview. That's what you should arrange right away. All right, well, we're going to have to bring child services in on this. We have to? I kind of tried that route. Uh, we didn't really hit it off. Oh. OK, well, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. Don't even say you know me. I was just thinking, a couple of days ago when I was taking Julie to school, I had Terrence in the car seat and this car pulled out in front of us, came out of nowhere. And I had to slam on the brakes and Terrence started crying. I don't know, what if I didn't have his belt on tight enough and that's when he got hurt? You didn't do this. They made a mistake. Yeah, no, 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 no. She's... she's a liar. Ed, we found the gun you used in Lost Lagoon. Your prints are all over it. Well, yeah, I shot him. But not like she says I did. I. She made me. She made you? How did she make you? How did she make you do it? She said that Bobby was going to kill her. And he was going to kill me, too, because she was in love with me now and, and not with him. He's crazy. But you're the one who pulled the trigger, right? Yeah. The... Let me talk to her, because then I can get her to tell what really happened. You willing to wear up? Yes. What does that mean? You willing to wear a recording device on your body that will record your conversation with Ruby? Yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing. OK. Smart choice. Hello. Hi. Listen, before we go in, I need you both to consider Julie's age and circumstances. She's very fragile. So we please just keep your questions simple, considerate. Oh, well, let's just stop right now, because all we had prepared were a bunch of complex and inconsiderate questions. Nobody's looking to beat a confession out of anybody here. I just try to keep an open mind. We'll do the same. If I feel you're being inappropriate, I'm going to intervene, OK? Counselor. Uh, we're uh, actually here to see the Ellison's daughter. Well, I'm sorry, detectives. You're going to have to leave the premises. This is a restraining order from the Supreme Court preventing you or anyone from your office from speaking to any member of the Ellison family, including Julie Ellison. Have a nice day. Thank you.
Excuse me. What are you doing here? Uh, my name's Don McDaVinci. I'm the coroner working on your son's case, which gives me the authority to be back here where your son died. Yeah, well, I don't care who you are. You can't be here without our lawyer present. Your lawyer, okay. This uh, swing set, what would you say its highest point it is? About 10 feet? And this is where you found your son. Here. See, now we know, and we know this for an absolute fact, that the chances of a child falling and then dying from a distance like this are just about zero. It's not how your son died. Your son died as a result of someone shaking him so severely it caused his brain to hemorrhage. We've told you what happened. No, I don't think you really know what happened. Is your, is your husband home? He's out. What about your daughter, uh, Julie? I can't speak with my daughter. We have a restraining order. Against the police. I'm not the police. And I'm here to tell you, you can't allow your daughter to talk to me. And we can possibly discover the truth, or we can extend this extremely painful situation into months and possibly even years. Please let me talk to her. Now, Julie, do you remember the two policemen that came here and they were asking questions about your brother, Terrence? Yeah, a policewoman asked me questions. That's right. And what you told her was that your brother, Terrence, was in here with you when you were watching TV. Yeah, he was bugging me to play with him. He was bugging you? Did that make you mad? Yeah, I was trying to watch TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. That could really make you mad. So did you give him a shove or did you get into a fight, give him a push? No. No? How was he feeling, your brother? Was he happy? Was he sad? Was he something else? I don't know. But he wanted to go outside to play, so he wasn't feeling sick or anything like that, was he? I don't think so. Where was he before he came in here with you? With Daddy in the study. How do you know? Daddy called me. He wanted me to play with Terrence. Why did Daddy want you to play with Terrence? Because Terrence was being a pain in the butt. He was being a pain in the butt, was he? Is that what your dad said? Yeah, I heard him when I wanted to get Terrence. Oh, yeah? What was he saying, your dad? That he was a bad boy and stopped crying. So he's mad. Pretty mad, your dad, was he? Yes. Okay, tell me again, tell me again. So you gotta lead her a little bit. Like, hey, Ruby, the cops picked me up. Hey, Ruby, the cops picked me up. And you don't know what to do on account of she told you to kill Bobby. Hey, Ruby. The cops picked me up. The cops picked me up and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, like that. You gotta lead her into saying she told you to do it, okay? Okay. Okay, let's go over it again. Okay. Hey, Ruby, the cops picked me up and I don't know what to do. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay. We'll be real close. As soon as she admits anything, we'll move right in here. Put your shirt on. Okay. Hey, Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Ruby, hey! Based upon what I just heard in there, I'm gonna have to phone social services right now and recommend they come down here and remove your daughter from the home. No, you can't do that. You don't have the right to decide what's best for my family. I just can't in all good conscience leave her living here, as long as your husband's also living here. Honey, you suggest that I throw him out? He's not a threat to Julie, to anyone. I'm not so sure about that. He lied to us regarding the circumstance of your son's death. Hey, you are asking me to break up my family. I have lost my son. Do you want me to lose my daughter or my husband? That's a choice you're going to have to make. Hello? Yeah, could you give me a uh, Sharon, please?
business. What are you doing? Piss off! You heard me, there's a room full of witnesses. I'm not gonna hurt you, just calm down, calm down. Right, so you know, Touch right? me. I'm not, I'm not gonna... What do you want? I wanted to see you. Well, here I am, what do you want? I want... Cops picked me up. I told them that you put me up to killing Bobby. Well, what did you do that for? Because I was mad at you. I tried to stop him from messing up the com computer, and I it didn't, it didn't seem like he was hurt. And I forgot. But I, it wasn't you, and it's not Julie. It's me. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I did this. I'm, I'm really sorry. But if I remember, I, 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 I shook him. Oh, I just had to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. until the police told me about how he, about how he died, about the shaking. You have to understand, I have never even hit my kids. Never. All right, you admit shaking turns. Yeah. I'll accept a charge of criminal negligence if the other child will be returned to live with her mother. Oh, I gotta speak to the Crown Attorney on this one. But uh, I can't see how we can't make a deal here. If you excuse me for a second.
Hey, Mac. How are you doing there? Pretty good. Man, she ripped this family completely apart, set the parents at each other, and ripped the surviving daughter right out of their arms. But, hey, hopefully they'll find a way to stitch their lives back together again, don't you think? Yeah, right. Well, at least we know what happened. Yeah. Hope so. Hey, Mac. 